How are you guys tonight? First, I'm going to explain what the bottling investment group that I work for is. Um, the, bottling, and the bottling investments group, we purchase struggling independent franchise Coca-Cola Cola bottlers outside of the United States. All of our bottles are international. We nurse them back to health and then try and sell them to other franchise bottlers. Uh, our bottlers generate more than $10 billion in the global revenues for the Coca-Cola system each year. And BIG owns or has an interest in bottlers in 34 countries outside of the United States. Coca-Cola does do business in every country in the world except for two. That would be Cuba and North Korea, not surprisingly. Um, the bottler is currently supported by the Coke One Plus, which I represent, represent the Coke One Plus solution. That's our SAP solution. Um, are in China, the Philippines, South Africa, Germany, Singapore, Malaysia, Germany, and India. And we are currently implementing in Japan with a go live scheduled in April of next year. Uh, this is just an org chart of the organization that I work, the Solution Quality and Testing Center of Excellence. Um, there are two employees up there, my CDO and me. Everybody else is outsourced within the group. We do have two people I'll be hiring in India at some point. But uh, I have a number of people from IBM and a number from Accenture that are staffing for my testing automation, um, performance testing, and right now I'm the only person dealing with CAST. Uh, I do the analysis. I actually deal with all the guys myself. And then I give the analysis off to our development center of excellence in India to do all of the remediation. This explains some of the tool sets that we use for our quality analysis at Coca-Cola for Coke One Plus. Um, you can see in the, our requirements traceability matrix during the analyze phase of our project, we use ARIS for doing our business process modeling, which um, I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with ARIS. It's, I believe, primarily for the business process modeling for SAP. I don't know if it's used for anything else. I'm really only familiar with SAP. Uh, I've been doing SAP at Coca-Cola for 17 years, so I'm pretty much totally ignorant about everything outside the world of SAP. Um, and then as we get down into build, you can see that's where we use CAST, and we're doing CAST analysis. Um, we use our CAST analysis, as I was mentioning in some of the comments earlier today, right now against our quality environments, so we're not getting much change in there. That's something you'll see in my next step slides that we'll be changing. And that's how we're dealing with code quality measurement. We use a tool called Live Compare. Again, I know that one's uh, very much SAP focused uh, that helps us to do impact assessment for any of our code changes that are coming up there to help us guide what our testing is. And we use HP Performance Center. Um, HP ALM actually is what we're using for doing all of our testing and works off Certify. I own all these tools. I have Certify for doing the testing automation and scripting automation. Um, lucky me with that small team and no employees, I get to own all those things, licensing of all those things, all those vendor relationships, and they actually have me running them all all the time. So that's why I don't get to sleep much. You might find me dozing off, and luckily I'm an insomniac, so that works very well for that. This is a little bit about the Coke One history with CAST. Um, we actually implemented CAST in 2011. Uh, we signed a wonderful contract that said, uh, I don't remember whether it was going to be weekly or monthly extracts. When I moved to the bottling investment group from one of the other bottling groups in the beginning of 2013, we had done exactly two extracts, I believe, one in 2011 and one in 2012. So we weren't exactly meeting the targets of what I believe were going to be weekly extracts. Uh, I tried to change that a bit and get it to actually doing it monthly. Um, you can kind of see here what our original scorecard, this was pulled back in July of 2000, uh, this is March of 2013 evaluation. Um, we're moving to upgrade soon. We haven't had many evaluations since then for a number of reasons. Uh, but our total quality index and our ECC, if you're not an SAP customer, I mean, that's our enterprise controlling system. That's the primary one in SAP we're using to do manufacturing, sales distribution, uh, important things like that. We did manage to get a rise out of it from 2011 to 2013 from 2.69 to 3.29 out of our TQI. Um, I'm not so sure that was really through the remediation efforts that they tell me before I got to the bottling investment group that were there. I think that that's, they decided to exclude some of the rules that we were actually checking and the TQI went up a little bit from there. So um, that is kind of the one nice thing, you know, if you have to report out to the executives, 
You can change that TQI and technical debt real easy without remediation. You just don't check everything, which uh, not such a bad thing. Uh, we uh, had 7,182 critical violations that existed after the March 2013 out of evaluation out of just over two and a half million lines of custom code. Uh, detailed breakdown of the 3.29 TQI and ECC shows it was still below the average in several technical areas. Um, if I can put on my glasses to read my presentation here, we weren't doing so well in modularity and uh, a lot of different things, but our primary focus when we went through to do the remediation was on performance because performance is what was suffering terribly from us. Because all of our applications are facing to our bottlers only, not the general public, we weren't as much worried about security. Um, because we're changing partners so much and they, eh, we weren't so much worried about changeability, we were worried about performance because we gotta keep the system up and running. The other things are what we're getting ready to focus on now as soon as I upgrade to the 7.3 dashboard and we start worrying about robustness, all the things for us to move forward and as we stabilize our partner group. Uh, remediation efforts will be focused in order on fixing violations of the critical rules with the lowest grade under a technical criteria, fixing violations for rules with a high weight and with a low score, same thing as I'm sure everybody focuses on, and prioritizing technical criterion with a high weight for the TQI and a low grade. Now, this is what happens. I know we, there was a question earlier today about getting it to your development team once you have the results from quality. This was actually created by our development manager as a report out to the KPIs for all of our CIOs. So I didn't even have to worry about this. This is what he dealt with because as I was mentioning, he wanted to show the value of why he was spending the money on the remediation because the cast services and software maintenance come out of my budget for quality. The remediation comes out of his budget because he's the one that actually is responsible for owning the code and dealing with it. So. When having to justify why he's remediating it, he has to show the value in it. So he created this slide and the wonderful next one that we presented. Um, this kind of shows an overall map of where in June of 13, we had run the cast analysis, the one I was mentioning from March, we went through and identified a number of violations here. Again, to get to the specific numbers, I have to be able to read them. Uh, we had identified uh, in July of 13, decided to take the monthly extracts. In August, I went to India and met with the uh, cast team in India as well as my COE to determine exactly what we were gonna work on and remediate. We identified 929 objects, uh, 717 of them finalized for analysis and started the remediation effort. We ended up remediating 229 objects to 120 unique T codes, the transactions with an SAP, and in March and April, went through our regression test, finally moved them to production in June. Now, this looked all great up there, and this looked wonderful to the CIO, but to me, this was an awfully slow path to get of remediating our code. This is what the uh, development director did to show all the value of what he was creating and what he fixed. A very nice thing, and it made the CIOs pretty happy, and that's what's kept them funding CAST and me sitting there doing anything. Next steps for us and uh, CAST, I'm upgrading to the 7.3 dashboard, um, and we're gonna move our dashboard to the CAST cloud instead of hosting internally. Uh, my predecessors apparently chose a very bad one of our hosting partners to host it, and uh, CAST is gonna be generous enough to cut that down to uh, about 8% of what I'm paying to have it hosted internally, so that's a very nice thing. Uh, we are gonna begin a monthly analysis and remediation in our development environments instead of our QA environments. We just added the Agile approach to our waterfall SDLC um, over the summer. Um, we're actually gonna start having some monthly mini releases during the summer of the 2015 to try and put things in. So as we're doing that, um, I'm gonna implement a CAS monitoring routine into our new Agile SDLC methodology. Uh, we're gonna be adding CAS quality compliance into our vendor service level agreements as we split it out and identify the different parts of SAP and how to get it to our specific partners. And we're gonna utilize the CAST analysis to identify opportunities conti to continue to reduce or eliminate our backlog of technical debt and existing code as our improved QA processes have nearly eliminated new violations. 
Now, that's one of the nice things about it is we did, after looking at all the rules that were out there, we did find a way with an SAP to actually automatically try and catch these violations before we move them and release them. So that has significantly reduced our new violations, but we're still sitting out there with thousands of them, and I think the last time I looked on our ECC system, we were up to $8 million in technical debt with our blended rate offshore. So I still have a bit of a challenge to get all that cleaned up, hopefully in 2015.